All right, this is part two of uh, on the mountain bracket that I made for uh, for my scooter, so to fit the uh, uh, top box from a uh, from a SH150. So I'm not done yet. Now I'm pretty much done with the edges and uh, and these three holes here because these ones are you know easy access where I could get to the back and get a, get a sharpie and and draw my line. Up here I have to you know since you can't access it from the bottom, I have to sort of draw a line from the from the top so I know where to cut and where to file. Right. So how I did this was that um, originally I was gonna use it some type of of, of a, a bracket on the back to to basically hold the screws, and instead of making, cutting out these holes the full size, I can leave like a section solid at the uh, at the ends. Say for example, right here and right here, so that way I could have a hole and and, and that the the bolt could go down to the uh, to the bracket. But I decided you know that's kind of messy and and it. Um, it wasn't very clean, so this way that I that I made it, it's a lot cleaner. Um, and you see, I'm using countersunk uh, screws, machine screws. On the back, I actually drilled into this, into the uh, original rack here. So you see uh, when it went through those four spots, right there, and uh, those those spots. Uh, <clears throat> so so. How I did that, you, know, you have to be very careful with it because on this back side, there's not too much room, not, not too much room where there's actually a spot where it's big enough, but also flat. So everything here is, you know, most everything is curved. So you can't, you know, you can't drill those spots. You, or you, you know, you can't put a screw on those spots because it's curved. So the only spots that that were uh, okay with it was basically where I, where I, I I drilled. Actually, this spot is kind of okay too, but it's kind of narrow. I would have preferred, you know, it's better to have it wider so that it's a little bit more stable, a little stronger. <clears throat> so how I did that was, uh, actually, let me take this off first. So these these screws are here are uh, six millimeters. Uh, I'm, I'm actually using stainless stainless screws and nuts and everything. Six millimeters. Um, uh, uh, and the pitch is uh, one, I believe, one millimeter. So how I did this was that I actually, <clears throat> I actually marked I marked the rack first and drilled these holes first before I actually drilled the the hole on my uh, back on my mounting plate. <clears throat> so basically, because the space here is so small, uh, and how I did this was I basically took the uh, I took the. Uh, The, let me use this. I just took the washer, and there was, you know, there were several types of washer. And these are these are actually also metric washers as well uh, for the six millimeter. <clears throat> so I, there were t several different types. Uh, I got this the washers that were that had the smallest uh, OD because it was too big. You know, it wouldn't fit in these little channels here, right? So I got the got the smallest OD, and basically I placed it where my fast spot was, and I placed it so that. <clears throat> that uh, the edge of the wa the washer did not go up on the curve the curved section of the the back, the underside of this this uh, rack. So I place it all there. Then I'm like, okay, you know that was a good spot. Held it down with you know with my uh, finger, and I just took a sharpie and kind of drew the inside circle, <clears throat> and I did that to all four points. And from there, that sort of gave me a, a, a place where I know okay where where my center is. I basically I just uh, um, center punch those spots. Then from there I I drilled I drilled the holes. Uh, I can't remember what drill size I used. Was it a quarter inch or one size smaller than a quarter inch? I can't I forget. And which I, I made it just big enough uh, to fit my uh, the machine screws. These these uh, six millimeter screws. You don't want the hole to be too big because you know this washer here. It's so it's so the 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 width. You know the the surface area is so small that if the hole's too big, there's not enough meat on here. So once you screw it down, it's, it's basically this spot right here. Uh, there's so little material that it might not be strong enough. So I made it just barely. You know, I mean, it's a pretty precise fit. Then that, after that, <clears throat> once I drilled these holes, what I did to uh, to uh, fit the uh, the rack itself was, you know, I basically lined up the rack as as best I could. I centered the rack as best I could. Uh, <clears throat> As best I could, and, and from there, again, I took the sharpie with the holes already. I just took a sharpie, I marked it, then it would mark 
the uh, the four holes on the uh, on the mounting plate. So once I had that, I sent to punch the mounting plate and I and I uh, drilled it. So there's several ways you could you could do this. Uh, and obviously the the main thing is that you have to use uh, countersunk because the the top top box, you know, it sits pretty much flat against here, not perfectly flat. You know, there's probably a millimeter or two of space between there. So you have to basically get something that's countersunk. You can't have a, a, a bolt head or nut nut head coming out. Otherwise, you know, the the the, uh, the top box won't fit. So I actually, uh, when I drilled these, I actually drilled it so that I could also tap it as well. Uh, <clears throat> so so it's basically these things are tapped, uh, but you don't have to. You could just, oops, you could just drill it straight through, straight through to fit, so that the your your uh, your screw could just fit straight through without without screwing on, and uh, and doing a countersunk. Uh, uh, afterwards, <clears throat> so but but how I did was I basically I drilled it, I countersunk it, then I uh, tapped it to fit the uh, fit the machine screw the threads because I want I want I you know yeah you don't have to like I said you don't have to do this I I just did it because I wanted to do it that way. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So so this is it so far. Uh, I, I still need to finish up this this one, like I said earlier. Uh, still need to finish up this one. Uh, then I'm pretty much done. All I need to do is afterwards, after I finish this, all I need to do is either uh, paint this thing or, or get it powder coated or something. I'm thinking of powder coating. And, you know, this is raw aluminum. You don't really want to leave raw aluminum. Just like just like with steel or iron, it rusts. Uh, aluminum will also oxidize. You know, rust is is iron oxide aluminum also oxidizes and when aluminum starts uh, oxidizing it turns white and it starts to get pitted just like just like with steel you know when when, when the rust starts to uh, uh you know when steel starts to get rusty over time the rust will actually eat into the uh into the steel and and, and make pit, pits right so same thing happens to aluminum uh but instead of uh the uh instead of red like uh like uh, iron oxide uh aluminum oxide is actually white uh, so de definitely have to uh, coat this thing. Uh, now that I'm, you know, cut all out these holes, it's not too not too heavy like it was originally with with the full plate. The full plate uh, was you know, originally it's a quarter inch thick by a square foot. That thing was, I would say probably a little bit over three pounds. This one, the way it is, it feels like it's, oh well, I don't know, maybe a pound or a little bit over a pound. So, so not too, uh, not too heavy, and it is, a, you know, like I said, a quarter inch thick. Um, and so far, that's what I got. Uh, once I finish, you know, uh, cutting this out and filing this clean, um, and getting it uh, coated, uh, I'll, I'll do another video with the top box mounted and all and everything. Uh, well, maybe, maybe I might do that before I get this thing painted or, or powder coated. Again, I'm leaning towards powder coating just because it's more durable. <clears throat> um, what else about this? So this thing took a really long time because everything was literally done by hand. I mean, I, I drilled the holes. I mean, that's obviously a hand drill, right? A little battery operated hand drill. Uh, and w cutting these lines here, uh, these these cutouts, you know, following the lines, and basically I had to had to drill a, a big hole for my, uh, my blade to fit in. I was using a jigsaw. And I, you know, and basically because this is metal, and and because of the thickness, and the uh, and the, uh, the the size of my blades, uh, on the jigsaw, I wasn't really able to do curves. So I basically I could only go straight. So I could only go straight here, straight there. Uh, um, so it took a lot longer. You know, you know, if this thing was wood, for example, wood you could actually curve pretty well because you know it's soft compared to metal, even though aluminum's a soft metal. Um, so all this, all this here was all, you know, done by hand and all filed down by hand and everything. Uh, so it took a really long time. Uh, so far to this point, I probably got about, oh, I don't know, uh, maybe 15 hours or something like that <laughs> into this, into this thing. Uh, you know, I, I've been spending an hour here, a couple hours here and there. Uh, Every day or so for the last two three weeks, 
last few weeks uh, doing this. So so it's taken uh, taken a long time. So you know, once I'm done with this, it's it's, it's taking quite quite a bit. Uh, so so far, I'm, it's turned out just just fine. It's just a matter of you know putting more time into it. And really, only this thing left here. So probably gonna spend another I don't know at least another two hours to to cut this out and and file it by hand and you know doing it, like, everything by hand. But everything else is pretty much for the most part is finished or it's as smooth as it's gonna get because you know whatever file I have, I don't necessarily have the 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 the, the finest files. Most of my files are bastard files, and I have a few a few uh, mill mill files, uh, but but I don't have any fine fine files. Uh, but it's smooth enough for me, and you know, once it gets uh, powder coated, this you know this roughness will will get coated over, so you so you won't really you know I won't be able to notice it. Um, let me see what else. Oh, other things. This is that these screw heads, these countersink screw heads here. When I did the countersinking, I didn't make it so that it's perfectly flush. I I gave it a little bit of a uh, of a. Uh, of a lip, if you will, uh, just because you know, didn't need to because there is about a, a millimeter or two of space between the the uh, the plate and the uh, and the rack. Um, let's see what else about this. So yeah, all the all the fasteners here I use is is uh, stainless steel, so that way you don't have to worry about corrosion. Except for this one, actually, they didn't have the stainless steel in this this size. You know, they had the oops, they had the uh, they had the ID, but not the OD. The OD on the stainless steel was actually a bit wider. So I actually had to, this one is actually, I think this one is zinc, zinc coated. Uh, surprisingly, this one was actually more expensive than the stainless steel one. Not sure why that was. But anyways, um, yeah. Oh, other thing is the, the size right here I got is, uh, the length is uh, 25 millimeters. You don't need that much. Uh, you, you, uh, depending on how many nuts and screws and such you use, you could you could probably get away with maybe 15, uh, 20 for sure, um, and maybe 15 millimeters. Um, and I'm actually thinking about getting some different screws, some shorter ones, and instead of using these regular regular nuts, I might start. I might get some acorn uh, acorn nuts, so that way the the, the screw head right here will be completely covered. Because uh, you know, on the bottom of this rack here. Because I use this rack too. Sometimes I tie tie things down with, uh, with bungee straps and stuff, and, and the straps sometimes will run across the bottom of the rack wherever. I don't want those. I don't want this sticking out, rubbing against a strap or a bungee somewhere. Uh, or, you know, as you ride and the vibration and such, it'll rub through and it, it, it'll it'll cut your uh, your strap or your bungee. So so I'm thinking about getting a short shorter uh, screw and getting an acorn uh, nut so that it's you know it's a rounded it has a round cap on it right so that way there's no threads exposed so there's no uh, no edge for for it to dig into the uh, into the straps so besides that uh, that's it so next video you'll see the uh, finished product uh, just shy of, of, of getting the, the base uh, plate uh, coated all right thanks for watching